Good morning. We're going to start as a um, subcommittee this morning. So the Senate Committee on Agriculture, Food Production, and, and Outdoor Resources will come to order. I appreciate everyone who has traveled across the state to attend and participate in today's hearings. For those here to testify on legislation, please speak into the microphone, introduce yourself, and address your comments to the committee members. Please keep your comments relevant to the legislation. Once your testimony concludes, the committee members will have an opportunity to ask questions. Please complete a witness appearance form that's on the table and leave it on the table for our committee members, uh, minutes, or please fill one out online. Uh, please silence your cell phones if you have not already. Uh, we've already heard both of these bills. We've got two bills here today. We've got one hour, so please keep your comments as short as possible. And we're going to start out with House Committee Substitute for House Bill 2150, or 2153, Representative Berger, and the floor is yours. Uh, Chairman Senator Bean and Vice Chair Senator Black, thank you for allowing me to present this bill this morning, House Bill 2153. It has to do with water exportation. Two years ago, I was sitting in ag policy, uh, and I asked the question, what keeps people from exporting water out of the state of Missouri? The DNR director at that time said, I don't know, Representative Berger, I'll get back with you on that. At that point in time, the next day they come in and we talked about legislation to create a mechanism to preserve our water rights in the state of Missouri. And I didn't say this, but I'm Jamie Berger, House District 148, which represents Scott County. So basically, along with the with DNR, Missouri Soybean, Missouri Corn, uh, Missouri Water, several of the ag groups, uh, we started crafting legislation to develop this bill, and it was just a long conversation to get where we need to be to protect our Missouri water rights. And then we come up with, the one that I come up with was, it goes through DNR for a permitting process, then after that it goes to the Clean Water Commission, and the Clean Water Commission is made up of four farmers, two wastewater treatment people, and one person at large. So if DNR approves the permit and the Clean Water Commission does not, that's the end of the permit. Also, if someone, that they can actually ask for the bill also to go to the Administrative <coughs> Hearing Commission, to determine whether it's valid or not. So there's three layers of protection to make sure that we're not pumping water. And we also use the hydraulic unit code number six and a 20 mile boundary outside of the state of Missouri. And the reason we use the 20 mile boundary is there are some instances where we're already pumping water out of the state of Missouri. Close to Joplin, we're pumping water to the Native America casinos. And somewhere around St. Joe, we're actually sending water out of the state too. So that would basically kind of grandfather those two facilities in. You know, I think we have to look at our water resources are very plentiful through the state of Missouri, and we're very, very blessed, especially in southeast Missouri. We do a lot of irrigation for our crops, and I know in northern Missouri they do the same thing, water in their livestock. I always feel like we need to make sure that we protect Missouri's water rights. Uh, north central Missouri doesn't have the benefits that we have. <clears throat> I always feel like if we need to pump water, we need to pump water to people in the state of Missouri that may need it more than people outside of the state of Missouri, and that's the idea of the cra crafting this legislation. I think it's so important that we protect our Missouri natural resource water. That's the idea of the bill. Uh, you know, one thing I can say, and I'll just kind of wrap up, like you said, these bills have been heard before. We only have an hour. Currently, anyone can export water out of the state of Missouri. The floodgates are literally wide open when it comes to access to our water resources. This is something I have great concern with, and so should all of us. My bill creates a mechanism for Missourians to have their voices heard when decisions are being made to allow or deny exporting our water. Without this bill, we're giving unlimited, unlimited access to our water supply. I feel strongly this bill meets the need of our constituents and our duty to set policy for the state. And when we talked about the uh, crafting this legislation, we also walk, worked with the SEMO Water District, which up are here, are here today, too, also to testify in support of. But we tried to include everybody that we could that ha maybe have a vested interest or a point that we didn't think of or a point that we didn't cover in this bill, and that's kind of what this legislation does. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Before we uh, proceed, uh, we've got a quorum here. So, Kyle, do you care to call the roll? Senator Speed. Here. Black. Burn Scatter, here. Brown, Carter, Crawford, here. McCreary, here. Washington. We have a quorum. We have a quorum. Um, all right. Any though? Anybody have any questions for Representative Berger? Seeing none, uh, we're going to go first for those in favor of the bill. Second will be not in favor, and then third for information purposes only. So, anybody here in favor of House Bill 2153? Mr. 
Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I am Dan Kleinsorg, Executive Director of Missouri Limestone Producers Association. Thank you for your time and thank you to the sponsor for bringing the bill forward. The limestone producers are in favor of this bill for a few reasons, uh, mainly dealing with uh, water use in the state. The number one is that we require the rivers to be at a certain level to ship our heavy product. Uh, river transportation is the reason Missouri is 29th in population but 5th in crushed stone. We outproduce our population quite a bit because of our ability to ship down the river. And then also quarries, many quarries use a lot of water for dust suppression required at local, state, and federal level. Uh, so as water users, both on the river and at the quarries, we support uh, retaining water resources in the state. Thank you. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. That's up in favor of House Bill 2153. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, my name is Jake Knabel with Missouri Corn Growers Association. We would like to go on the record in support of this legislation. I'd like to thank you as well as Representative Berger for bringing forward this important le uh, legislation once again this year. Uh, we support any effort to help ensure the long-term viability of our state's water resources and like to reiterate the importance of these assets to Missouri agriculture, not just for irrigation purposes, but also for transportation. With that, I'd be happy to take any questions that you may have. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Next up, in favor of House Bill 2153. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Lynn Schlosser, registered lobbyist for Missouri American Water. Um, we want to also thank Representative Berger for his fine work on this piece of legislation. Um, we as well want to protect Missouri's water resources, but this bill actually allows us to continue to uh, service our customers in the future and for today. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for witness? See so nothing for testimony. Thanks. Next up in favor of House Bill 2153. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Liz, <laughs> Liz Henderson on behalf of the Missouri Soybean Association, just want to go on record and support um, any way we can protect Missouri's precious water resource. We are very supportive of. Any questions for the witness? Thank you for testimony. Next up in favor of House Bill 2153. All right, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Ben Travelos, Missouri Farm Bureau, for reasons already stated, we'd like to go on record on support of this legislation. Any questions for the witness? Say none. Thank you for testimony. Next up, in favor of. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair, committee. My name is Michael Berg. I'm representing the Sierra Club, Missouri chapter. We'd like to uh, go on record in favor of House Bill 2153 as it's important to protect our water resources. And if you're shipping, it's ecologically unsigned to ship water hundreds or thousands of miles to grow in ecosystems that are not set up for growing uh, with mass amounts of water. Uh, the, the only change we'd make would be the definition of beneficial use. Prefer that it had aquatic life or wildlife as one of the beneficial uses, as we think that's a beneficial use in and of itself. But that's a small point. Uh, I think this is would, if passed, be an important step to protect our water resources. Any questions for the witness? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Next up, in favor of House Bill 2153. Good morning. I'm Laura Collins. I'm from Southeast Missouri. I'm a farmer first and president of the Southeast Missouri Regional Water District Board second. Um, we are absolutely in favor of this bill. We're major water users, we're irrigators, we rely on our water resource for the state to carry our crops to the end of the season, uh, along with the transportation piece. Um, if you all have any questions, we're available and at any time. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you for making the trip up and thank you for your testimony. Next up, in favor of. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Tony Benz representing the Missouri Agribusiness Association. We would like to uh, go on record in support and happy to answer any questions. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Thank you, sir. Next up in favor of House Bill 2153. Mr. Chairman, my name is Robert Cook. I'm from New Madrid, Missouri. I'm a retired farm manager and administrator of the Southeast Missouri Regional Water District and water is so important to our farm and our land and so i'm in favor of this and and answer any questions 
Any questions for this witness? Thank you for your testimony, sir. Next up, in favor of House Bill 2153. Seeing none, any of those here in opposition to House Bill 2153? Seeing none, anybody for informational purposes only? Mr. Chairman, Shannon Cooper today on behalf of the city of Kansas City, and I know I've spoken with Representative Berger as well as yourself. We have a few emergency contracts with municipalities in Kansas to where if there's a drought situation and they can't supply their water, we have an agreement to help them. Uh, Representative Berger talked about the mileage. We think it needs to be a little more than 20 based on whether that whether you start counting at the water plant or where we cross the state line. I've, Happy to visit with you, and I know Senator Washington's been helpful on this also. So just want to bring that to your attention. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for this witness? And we did work with uh, Senator Washington on that on the issue uh, when the Senate bill was on the Senate floor. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate it. Anybody here else for informational purposes only? Seeing none, uh, this will – well, Representative, do you have any closing comments? This will conclude the hearing on House Committee Substitute for House Bill 2153. Next up is House Committee Substitute for House Bill 2763, Representative Deal. You, are, you have the floor, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. For the record, Dane Deal, representing Bates Vernon, Cedar County, District 125. Here to present to you House Bill 2763. House Bill 2763, you guys might be familiar with from the Senate Bill. Um, 1416 sponsored by Senator Justin Brown heard on March 5th passed out of the house 91 to 57 this bill um, puts a process that we believe in the agriculture industry and depend on is the ultimate we believe anything that's gone through the full regulatory process uh, being the EPA and the FIFRA Act and has been deemed safe through multiple studies multiple um, endeavors and over time of about 50 years on certain products um, that they have fulfilled their duties to warn of the dangers associated with the product. With that, I, uh, I appreciate the time. I'll take any questions. Any questions for the representative? Senator Washington. Hi, Representative. Thank you for being here. Uh, real quick, if this bill would have been in place before the Roundup lawsuits, would this have prevented those lawsuits? No, I, I don't believe so. I think there's still modes of action they can bring suit against um, the company or for problems that they they uh, they see with the product. So I don't believe so in my capacity. Okay. So what is the main purpose of the bill? Um, you know, it's opinion? it's a stability um, standpoint for us. You know, whenever we have. Um, things that threaten the way we do things on the farm and products that we know and uh, trust um, and then you get an alternate study that contradicts um, over 2,000 studies and shows the uh, the uh, the efficiency the safety of the product and that threatens the way that we can use products or the way we know we can get products that's where it becomes a problem for us on the farm and the ag standpoint you you, you would agree that roundup was found to be a little dangerous by both farmers and mostly farmers. You know, I, I, I don't, um, from the farm standpoint, and us being the primary users, um, you know, to the tune of, uh, you know, I, 10 times the amount that most other people use, um, I, I don't think that I would agree with that. You know, with one study threatening um, what, what I would say, you know, one study going against a, a large amount of studies and over time, you know, the other deal representative is, when this uh, when this product came oh. out in the seventies, oh Senator, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm still new at this product or at this process. But you know, whenever, when, <laughs> whenever, whenever something's been out for this amount of time, gone through X amount of studies, been re-registered, and uh, been deemed safe, and that almost eighty percent of producers are using across the U.S. Um, that's something that we want to make sure maintains availability and. Um, is thought of as a good thing for all of us out there on the forum. Okay. Any further questions for Representative Deal? <laughs> <laughs> Seeing none. Uh, next up, or first up in favor of House Bill 2763, please come forward. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. 
Good morning. My mic's off. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for having me. My name is Catherine Hannaway. Uh, I'm a partner at Hush Blackwell. We represent Bayer, and I'm here to testify in favor of House Bill 2763, but I would be remiss if I didn't say what a pleasure it was to serve with your father in the House. Uh, what a great gentleman. Thank you very much. And it's, like I say, it's great to have you here and brought back a lot of memories. So thank you. Thanks. We don't that, um, this legislation is necessary to prevent a patchwork of different warning labels around the country. Many of those requirements are artificially created not by legislative bodies, but by trial court judges making evidentiary rulings. You've heard arguments today that the legislation may prevent people from suing pesticide manufacturers. That's simply not true. House Bill 2763 is designed to provide some clarity and certainty around the labeling requirements of the EPA scientists on the human health and safety of herbicides. Based on their consistent, consistent reviews of the science, EPA and regulators around the world have never found glyphosate to present a cancer risk to humans and thus have never required glyphosate-based herbicides to carry a cancer warning. There is just one outlier opinion, and I say opinion because it's really what it is. The organization that has this outlier opinion is called IARC, and IARC did not perform its own scientific research. It essentially had a book club where for two weeks they looked at other people's studies and concluded that it was their opinion that uh, glyphosate was a probable carcinogen for humans. Well, not surprisingly, um, IARC came to this opinion, and I say not surprisingly because IARC has evaluated over a thousand substances, and of those thousands that they have reviewed, only one has found not to be a carcinogen, carcinogenic in humans. And to give you some idea of the other kinds of products they've reviewed, they concluded that drinking hot beverages, including hot water, could pose a cancer risk to humans. So while it is mostly trial court judges creating the current patchwork of, of warning label requirements, even within our own state, some states are going forward with their own labeling requirements. Because of that IARC opinion, California tried to put a cancer warning on Roundup. Um, that labeling requirement was challenged in court by a coalition of ag and business groups, including the Missouri Chamber, uh, the Missouri Associated Industries of Missouri and the Missouri Farm Bureau. The lawsuit was also supported by an amicus brief, Friends of the Court brief, written by 11 state attorneys general from ag producing states. It was a bipartisan group. It was led uh, by, at the time, by then uh, Attorney General Josh Hawley from here in Missouri. Uh, the district court permanently, that, that California court permanently prohibited Roundup from uh, having to carry a cancer warning. And the court's decision was very recently upheld by the Ninth Circuit. Let me take just a moment to examine what that court said. They said it was a violation of Bayer's um, First Amendment rights to require a cancer warning on its product because while we all know the First Amendment gives us the right to speak, it also gives us the right to be silent, and in the commercial context, it prohibits the government from compelling someone to put a false or misleading label on their product. And the court, the Ninth Circuit, the most liberal uh, circuit court in the country, found that um, IARC's opinion was at best controversial and at worst false and misleading. The court stated, and I quote, IARC's conclusion is not shared by a consensus of the scientific community. So right now you're probably asking yourself, why has Bayer lost lawsuits? The consistent theme in those recent lawsuits is that Bayer was not able to fully and accurately tell the jury uh, the current scientific and regulatory landscape surrounding glyphosate. For instance, in many of those trials, the jury was allowed to hear about the IARC opinion, but was prohibited from hearing about all of the other 
worldwide scientific regulatory bodies that have disagreed with IARC's finding. Also, the Plaintiffs' Council um, was allowed to represent that misrepresent the state of regulatory review in both the U.S. and elsewhere by suggesting that EPA's current views on gly glyphosate have been vacated. They have not been vacated. Um, plaintiffs were allowed to state that Europe did not re-register glyphosate. Again, it's not true. It was just renewed in December of 2023. The other thing that you may not know when you read the headlines about the lawsuits is that Bayer has won far more of those lawsuits than it has lost. And even when it has lost and the jury awards go up on appeal, they are reduced by 90%. But going through that litigation process and having this patchwork of labeling requirements has cost uh, this company billions of dollars, even when there's consistent scientific consensus that glyphosate does not cause cancer. Farmers, the industry, anybody who likes to eat food needs your help to protect this safe, effective, invaluable tool for farmers here in Missouri and around the globe. I respectfully ask you to vote for House Bill 2763 and move it to the Senate floor. I'd be very happy to take any questions. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you very much for your Oh, excuse me, Senator Washington. Hi. Oh, it's so close. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being here, Speaker Hanaway. It's a pleasure to meet you in person. Just real quickly, as you were giving the statistics on what's going on in the Ninth Circuit, have there been any lawsuits in the Eighth Circuit? No, there hasn't because no state has tried to put a labeling requirement on glyphosate. Mm -hmm. So there have been no labeling lawsuits. Have there been any other uh, just uh, tort lawsuits? So most of those suits... Because I, I, I know people call me all the time for referrals, and I do send folks to uh, a lawyer uh, north of Kansas City. So I know lawsuits are possibly being filed in Missouri. Are you saying that they are not? Are they part of a larger no. class action? No. Lawsuits are definitely being filed in Missouri, but those are lawsuits where a, a person believes that they have had an experience with Roundup that entitles them to recover from the company. So it's a person versus the company, whereas the one in California was the state versus the company. But those individual lawsuits go to state court. They don't go to federal court. The okay. California, and, and the Eighth and the Circuit is a federal court. So I, I know. I, I have one of those low degrees <laughs> you have. Um, uh, so you're saying that this would be burdensome, overly burdensome for them to put the label warnings. Isn't that what tobacco, big tobacco was forced to do is to put label warnings on there? Yes, after there was definitive evidence that smoking cigarettes caused cancer. The and we're problem, saying that there's not definitive evidence right now that Roundup causes injuries. There is an overwhelming um, number of studies from regulators and scientists around the world that it does not cause can pose a cancer risk to humans. It, it, the great weight of evidence. IARC, as I said, is the only outlier. This is European authorities, this is Asian authorities, this is U.S. authorities, and the one great big difference between cigarettes and food is you can live without cigarettes. You can't live without food. And this product has allowed agriculture to be far, far more productive than it was before it was invented. And r truly, food prices would go up if it was unavailable, and food likely would be scarce. Thank you. Any further questions to this witness? Once again, thank you for your thank testimony you. very much. Next up in favor of House Bill 2763, please come forward. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I'm Dr. Liza Lockwood with Bears Crop Science Scientific Affairs Team. I'm an emergency physician, a medical toxicologist, and most importantly, a mom. 
I'm here today in support of House Bill 2763. Could you please turn your microphone on? Sorry. There's it's a, on. Or maybe a little closer to Okay. You. I'll start. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I'm Dr. Liza Lockwood with Bayer's Crop Science Scientific Affairs Team. I'm an emergency physician, a medical toxicologist, and most importantly, a mom. I'm here today in support of House Bill 2763. I want to start by thanking the chairman and the committee for hearing this important issue. As many of you know, Missouri is home to the Bayer Crop Science Division, which employs several thousand employees, scientists who are at the forefront of global research and development to bring important advances in agriculture to farmers. Missouri farmers are part of the most critical profession in the world, agriculture. Agriculture is the foundation of civilization. Without it, you and I wouldn't be sitting here. We'd be too busy hunting and gathering to feed our kids. Which brings me to this. We have 10,000 years of experience with organic farming and 50 years of food security in the West due to the scientific advances in agriculture. Those advances have revolutionized our productivity and food security. In 1900, 45% of our population farmed, and we lived to the ripe old age of 45. Fast forward to today, and 2% of our population farms, feeds the entire U.S. population, and exports almost another 25% of what they grow. And now we've increased life expectancy to almost 80. That's unheard of. One, one of the major reasons for this boom is glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup. Bayer is the only domestic producer of glyphosate, which is as critical to global farming as antibiotics are to medicine. Glyphosate is perhaps the most studied chemistry on the market and its safety record is unparalleled. It does not cause cancer. This has been evaluated by thousands of independent experts and glo global regulators multiple times over the past 50 years at taxpayer expense. I can attest to its safety personally as I use it at home and my own mother uses it to manage our weeds on our family farm. If I thought it would cause harm, I wouldn't let her use it. FIFRA, or the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act, ensures that requirements for health and safety warnings are met. House Bill 2763 would simply ensure that any pesticide registered with EPA meets those standards and assures farmers that they will have access to critical tools that have made them so productive. Missouri farmers need your help. I respectfully ask you to vote for the passage of House Bill 2763. Thank you. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Next up, in favor of House Bill 2763, please come forward. Sen Senator Beam, Ag Committee. My name is Randy Rogers, uh, currently chairman of the Missouri Agribusiness Association, otherwise known as MOAG. But I also work at an ag retail business in East Central Missouri, and I farm. And I, we, Missouri Agribusiness Association, is in favor of this bill. I'm in favor of this bill as a farmer, as a user of chemical products. But most importantly, we need definitive rules and guidelines that are written by scientists that are fair and balanced. We think FIFRA was passed in 1947 and gives us a guideline for labeling requirements for all chemicals, not just Roundup. And so, as an ag retailer, we're concerned about the safety of our employees. Some of us have applied different products for a number of years. The safety of our employees is important. The safety of our customers is important. The safety of our families is important. And yes, we use this. My wife is sitting back here in the background I don't know if you guys are familiar with what Asian honeysuckle is, but it's an enemy at our house. She sprays Roundup on a regular basis, but not, but not, and and so do I. <laughs> but it's important to to have a guideline and a guidebook and a central rule that is scientifically based and not based on outliers. For this reason, Missouri Agribusiness Association and most farmers in Missouri are in favor of the, of this bill. Thank you. Any, Any questions, questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Next up in favor, House Bill 2763. 
Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Ray McCarty, Associated Industries in Missouri, as you heard, we were plaintiffs in the lawsuit in California, and really we see this bill as trying to prevent what happened in California from happening in Missouri. A proposition in 65 tried to make the company say something they didn't believe was true, which would have affected all manufacturers of these products. And so we want to make sure that doesn't happen in Missouri. We find it as, uh, as something that would be uh, very informative and, and prevent something from bad from happening in the future. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank, thank you for your testimony. Next up, in favor of? Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Heidi Geisbuehler Sutherland here on behalf of the Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Also in favor of the bill because it helps ensure that agricultural businesses won't have to face unfair failure to warn lawsuits and still gives consumers additional, well, it doesn't give them additional, it still gives consumers alternative recourse whenever they want to go through the legal process. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you for testimony. Next up in favor of House Bill 2763. All right, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Jacob Knabel again with the Missouri Corn Growers Association. We would also like to go on the record in support of this legislation and thank Representative Deal for bringing it forward. Uh, ultimately, we feel that growers require certainty, that the important crop protection tools that they utilize every day on their farms, those such as glyphosate, um, will be available for the long term. We feel strongly that pesticides are an essential crop protection tool that provide many environmental benefits by enabling conservation practices. And with that, I'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you for testimony. Next up in favor of House Bill 2763. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, Liz Henderson on behalf of the Missouri Soybean Association. I uh, won't belabor the point, just to echo our support for this bill. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you for testimony. Next up in favor of House Bill 2763. Mr. Chairman, Shannon Cooper, on behalf of the Missouri Cattlemen's Association, we just want to go on record in favor of the bill. I don't know that I can add anything to the testimony. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for the witness? Same Thank hand. you, sir. Thank you for testimony. Next up in favor of... Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Ben Travelis, Missouri Farm Bureau, would like to go on record in support. Any questions of this witness? Thank you for testimony. Next up, in favor of? Good morning, Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Megan Howerton. I'm here on behalf of the Missouri Pork Association. Just want to go on record that we support the bill. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you for testimony. Next up, in favor of House Bill 2763. Seeing none, anybody here not in favor of House Bill 2763, please come forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Matt Clement. I'm an attorney in Jefferson City, and I'm here to speak against the bill. I uh, spoke before this committee a, a few weeks ago, so I won't repeat all of my comments, but just to give people some context. I represented a man from Miller County in a lawsuit here in Cole County against Monsanto late last year. Uh, that man got non-Hodgkin's lymphoma after using Roundup for over 20 years at his property down the road here in Miller County, as I said. A jury of, of 12 conservative Cole Countyans found that the evidence showed that Monsanto did know about the danger of Roundup and its propensity to cause cancer to humans and found them liable for his injuries. Uh, this bill would have prevented him from bringing that lawsuit, in my opinion. I ask you not to vote for this bill because it will treat Missouri consumers differently than every other consumer of Roundup in the county, in the country, excuse me. Um, I think it's also important to put into context a little bit about what the EPA does with products like this. Roundup was first registered with the EPA back in the 1970s. In 1985, they found that Roundup could be carcinogen. Monsanto lobbied the EPA and convinced them that that study was wrong. It was re-registered in 1993, and the EPA didn't do anything at all with that until 2009, when it looked at re-registration. During that 2009 process, lots of studies were, were reviewed by the EPA. The EPA doesn't do their own studies. Many of those studies were industry studies or studies that were funded by Monsanto. In 2016, they decided they would re-register um, Roundup 
without a cancer warning. The Rural Coalition, which is a not-for-profit um, organization made up of farmers and farm workers, filed a lawsuit against them. The Ninth Circuit, the same court that was just talked about, vacated all of those findings because they found, I'm just going to quote a few things from the, from the opinion. The cancer paper, which is the, the paper that the EPA sends to um, their scientists to look at, discussed human epidemiological studies showing that what could be considered suggestive evidence that glyphosate exposure causes NHL. Most studies EPA examined indicated that human exposure to glyphosate is associated with at least somewhat increased risk of developing NHL. Another study, for instance, indicated there was an increased risk of NHL, which is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, for those with more than 10 years of glyphosate exposure. In addition, that same study, as well as another, indicated that those who are exposed to relatively more glyphosate in a year face a higher risk of NHL. The court then said, based on those considerations, we vacate the human health portion of EPA's interim decision and remand for further analysis and explanation. So I heard the EPA didn't vacate that, but it's clear that they did. I'm sorry, the, the Ninth Circuit didn't vacate the EPA's decision, but it's clear that they did. So the EPA has to start over, and they haven't done that. And so what this bill would do would, be, would give immunity to Bayer and Monsanto for findings back in 1993, 31 years ago. Science has caught up. I don't think that's good practice. And I know we're limited on time, so I'll just wrap up my comments and say I ask you to please look at the history of this product before you make your final decision on what to do. And I ask you to protect Missouri consumers. Don't treat them differently than every other consumer in the country. Thank you. Did you fill out a witness form? I did. Any questions for this witness? Senator Washington. All right. Thank you for being here. Thank you for telling the story of your client. But I do have a question. So you said that if this bill passes, they would not be able to file you wouldn't be able to sue um, if this is just on a failure to warn are there no other uh, remedies for you or, or your potential clients there are possible other other legal theories for sure but the the central theme of all of these cases is the failure to warn and so I I think it would be hard-pressed for um, people to bring lawsuits like they have against Monsanto I don't think they, they would be successful thank you any further questions for this witness Seeing none, thank you for testimony. Thank you. Next up, not in favor of House Bill 2763. Please come forward. Good morning. My name is Amy Gunn. I have a witness sheet. Um, I'm the current president of the Missouri Association of Trial Attorneys, and I am speaking in opposition of House Bill 2763. I think the testimony so far um, from the witnesses in support have made it very clear the purpose of this bill, which is to eliminate lawsuits um, against Bayer for Roundup. Um, and that's, the, that's what we've heard. I understand the point of that, why Bayer would want that. Um, the history, of course, is that Bayer purchased Monsanto for $63 billion um, and was immediately um, under the um, umbrella of the lawsuits that have been filed for people who have um, been struck with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer. Um, what's interesting, though, to me is that there are many other products that will be affected by this. I mean, we've heard this is a bear issue, and that's, that's fine. But if you've read the bill, which I know you have, you'll note the, the breadth of it. And it includes all products that have gone through this process, um, and then it immunizes those products and their, manu and their manufacturers for any warning um, that may not be on the product for anything it causes, for any risk that it may have. So yes, we're here today um, hearing from supporters uh, from Bayer, 
but looking at other things that, are cur that we currently know about includes paraquat, which is um, a herbicide that is currently manufactured by a company, uh, Chem China, which is a Chinese state corporation. Um, it shouldn't be a surprise uh, that this bill will immunize that company as it continues to sell Paraquat in the United States of America. Um, I don't think that should be overlooked. In addition, I mean, Paraquat causes Parkinson's disease. Uh, and it has been banned by China since 2020. This product that is imported to this country, used by our citizens and your constituents, that causes a degenerative neurologic condition and leads to death, will be, will be immunized in the future by this bill. Um, with respect to the NICE circuit and the A circuit, um, the, there's a difference between the labeling issues that are going on in the federal court from Prop 65 in California, which is the NICE circuit, and the cases that are being brought by citizens, your constituents, against manufacturers of products that cause harm. And the labeling issue, this patchwork, that it, no court in these cases where people are suing for their cancer is requiring as a remedy in that tort case that the label be changed or added. It has nothing to do with the courts not doing that in these cases. The court is simply allowing evidence after argument and allowing the debate about whether Roundup or Paraquat or whatever other herbicide or pesticide that may cause harm, whether it caused the injury claimed. That's your Seventh Amendment right. That is an important amendment, that is an important piece of our civil justice system in this country. To be able to have disputes among citizens, among companies and individuals heard in front of a jury of his or her or its peers and resolved in a civil manner. Here we have a situation where a certain company with follow-along companies, whether intended or not, will be immune from lawsuits for harm caused by its product. If Monsanto or Bayer or Roundup, if these products don't cause cancer, if they don't, or if the plaintiff in that lawsuit hasn't used it enough to get to the threshold where science says it can cause cancer, it does cause cancer, then those cases are lost. That's the system we have. You can argue, well, jury uh, or, or heard evidence they shouldn't have heard. That's our system. Judges make decisions all day long about what evidence can come in and what evidence can't come out. There's an appellate system. You get to use your rights under our Constitution to exercise those uh, abilities in front of courts of your peers and juries of your peers. You win some, you lose some. That's what's happening now. That's when it, that will continue to happen, God willing, unless this kind of legislation is allowed by this body. And then you have to ask yourself, well, what's next? What happens next? Who comes next? to ask for the same uh, immunity for whatever products that they're bringing into this state and being used by your constituents unknowingly that can cause them, whether it's now or in 20 years. So based on those reasons, um, I am opposed to this bill, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for this witness? Senator McCurry. Good morning. Um, Good morning. I was, you, you gave us a lot of information. Could you go back and talk about how you feel like there's a disconnect between what this bill does and that the courts are not actually, in their decisions, are not actually telling the company that they need to change their label? Yes. This, so when we're here, when I'm opposing this, 
particular bill, there is no component of which I am saying or anyone is saying uh, a, a label has to be added. Um, and, and when clients and uh, citizens file lawsuits against whichever company and say that we believe this product caused my cancer, the, the cause of action is for a failure to warn. A failure to warn that this product that I used and I paid for and you made money off of can cause me cancer. So that's a failure to warn claim. Um, and the products don't currently have a label or at the time don't say this could cause cancer or harm or risk or any of those things. And so that's the cause of action that goes forward. You didn't warn me that this can harm me. And a jury gets to decide a number of things. Number one, was there a duty to warn? Was there even a duty to do that? Number two, if there had been a warning, would that have changed the outcome? And most importantly, and where the meat of these lawsuits are, is did this product actually ca cause me harm? And that's what's heavily debated. And even in our in prior testimony today, there's this debate about whether it does or it doesn't. And that's a robust good thing to happen in the scientific community. And that's a robust good thing to happen in a courtroom. That juries of our that regular people get to listen to the evidence and say, you know what, did this cause it or did it not? And that's what needs to happen. That's what continues to need to happen in order for us to respect the Seventh Amendment. So I don't know if that answers your question, Senator. I hope I, I, I'm a little, I try, I tried. Okay. Any further questions for this witness? Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Remind everybody we've got just a few minutes left where we're going to have to leave this hearing room and, and call this uh, committee over. So next up, not in favor of Senate or House Bill 2763. Please come forward. Oh, uh, my name uh, is Michael Berg with the Missouri Sierra Club. I'm representing the Sierra Club. Uh, we'd like to go on record in opposition to House Bill 27. Six three. We do not think that the ability of bringing duty to warn uh, lawsuits against uh, pesticide manufacturers should be uh, restricted with this bill. Any questions for this witness? See none. Thank you for testimony. Next up, not in favor of House Bill twenty seven sixty three. Seeing none. Anybody here for informational purposes only? Seeing none. Representative, do you have any closing comments? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. Um, we, like I said, I feel when we're referencing this bill, it's very specific um, when it references carcinogens. Um, some other pesticides that were talked about are, aren't even of the same classification, the restricted use pesticides. So I really encourage um, on the bill and what it actually does. Um, we feel like we've crafted a bill that will help agriculture and um, promote our way of life well into the future. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. So this will conclude the hearing on House Committee Substitute for House Bill 27 or 2763. Uh, we will have an executive session later this week. Um, there will be a committee substitute on Representative Berger's bill that will be mailed out later today, so be looking for that. And with that, I have no further business coming for committee, so I would make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? I have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>